Welcome to Pat's Cast. I'm Brad Whitaker. It is official. Gerard Mayo was introduced as the Patriots head coach on Wednesday. And overall, the press conference left me with many open questions about the future of the football team. Who will be the offensive and defensive coordinators? Gerard, are you the decision maker like Bill was? Or will the team hire a GM? Is that going to be Matt Groh? Mayo's responses focus mostly on how the team is evaluating all that right now, which is fair. It's still early, but you're going to have to move quickly. I know the draft still seems a really far distance away. It's about three months, a little over three months. But you got to figure out that staffing situation um, in the front office situation well beforehand in order to get those dominoes to fall properly heading into the 2024 NFL draft and the 2024 season. Now, Mayo's introduction Focus mostly on, you know, celebrating him being the first black head coach of the Patriots, which is a real milestone. It's something that should be celebrated. That's not like a political thing to say. Like, that's something that you need to acknowledge. Very important. Something that should be celebrated. And he also talked about how he plans to ultimately change the culture in Foxborough, which I have a little bit of issue with, and I'll get to that in just a second. Um, Mayo spent most of the press conference addressing the fan base and the media's concern, not just the Boston sports media, but the national media's concerns that it's going to be more of the same with him as like a defensive minded head coach, that he's going to just be Bill Belichick light. And he really made an effort to differentiate himself from Bill Belichick throughout that entire press conference. Personally, I think that was a bit of a mistake. You know, Mayo... I, I get it. I get it. There are many frustrations with Bill Belichick coming off of the Patriots' 4-13 and season, and I think that is fresh in a lot of people's minds, but most Pats fans really look back on the last 24 years with, with gratitude for all that Belichick brought to the organization, and we kind of do have a short-term memory loss about what happened this last season because we won six Super Bowls in 24 years. Not only that, we appeared in, th- what, 10 Super Bowls and uh, uh, had one of the the... We were constantly in the AFC Championship game. Nearly every year, Patriots were in the AFC title game. And, you know, here's a guy that was drafted by Bill and elevated as a coach because of him. And it, Belichick played a major role in developing Mayo into, into the coach and the guy that he is today. Clearly, things did not end very well between the two, which is understandable. It's kind of awkward when you have the heir apparent in the building, somebody that you helped promote, and Belichick kind of had to deal with that in the back of his mind all season long, knowing like, hey, there's a clause in Mayo's contract, which I signed off on saying he can become the head coach without any interviews, without anything. Like, I understand how awkward that would have been. And I'm not saying that, you know, Mayo was was showing ingratitude. Um, he did say a nice thing about Bill, like how he, the biggest lesson that he learned from Belichick was that hard work works. But that's not exactly a revelation. You, you, you should work hard in life. Like that's, that's how you get good at things is by working hard. And, and Mayo certainly has worked hard and on the defensive side of things. And I, I would expect that to continue as he becomes the head coach. But instead, he kind of spent a lot of the press conference focusing on how he was going to break down silos and barriers of communication, make sure all the players and coaches feel comfortable speaking up raising their concerns, that his approach will be much more collaborative from both a player personnel and a game planning standpoint. But ultimately, somebody has to be the decision maker there. And like I said at the top here, there's a lot of questions about who that decision maker is, especially when it comes to player personnel duties. Is there going to be a GM? What's going to happen on the offensive side of the ball? And If your concern is we want someone different than Bill, well, Mayo made that loud and clear. Like, I'm going to be a lot different than Bill Belichick. But I do have a concern that you may be overcorrecting in that area a little bit. In fact, I would argue Belichick got a lot softer these last four years since Tom Brady left. And perhaps that played a key role in the team's recent poor performance. Gerard doesn't necessarily need to rule with an iron fist like Bill Belichick used to when they won all the Super Bowls, really putting that pressure on Brady and Edelman in despite all of the success. But he's still going to need to earn the respect of his players and coaches. I get it. It doesn't work today. Like p- Players are different. You, you do need to, I wouldn't say coddle them, but 
you, you got to hear them out a little bit more. You can't just tell them what to do and expect them to do it. And Mayo made that clear. And I think he certainly has the respect of the current players and staff that are there. But there's going to be many new pieces brought in in the coming months. And that that's going to be a real issue potentially is, is are you going to earn the respect? Are they going to listen to you going on? And, you know, Mayo made it clear, like, I did not hire this coaching staff, meaning there is going to be some potentially radical changes happening there. And, look, we need changes. I've argued, especially in the offensive side, you really need to modernize. I was the one pushing for Eric Bieniemy to be the next head coach for that reason. I hope he gets an interview for the offensive coordinator job. But, you know, they, they... I'd say the Patriot way has worked out pretty well. And if you're going to change the culture in the way that Mayo kind of envisions, there is the potential there of overcorrecting that. And suddenly the team looks diff- completely different from a cultural standpoint. And, you know, what did bother me the most about the Boston sports media on Wednesday, who asked many, many questions throughout the press conference, and then there were more than a dozen one-on-one interviews with Mayo afterward, is nobody asked him the obvious question to me, which was, how do you plan to coach the offense? You know, we know the defense is going to be just fine. Most of the players are coming back, and Mayo has done an incredible job coaching that side of the ball. And from all reports that have come out, Belichick, because the offense was struggling, really did focus a lot of his efforts on the offensive side of the ball the last two years. And Mayo, alongside Steve Belichick and and Demarcus Covington and company, you know, really ran with the defense on their own, and the results speak for themselves. They, they, if you look at the past four to five years, the Patriots have been, in the, the totality of that time, the best defense in the league. And, you know, I, 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 they're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. The defense is going to come back, and they're going to play at an elite level. I don't think that um, that is the major concern. But he now oversees the offense, and we know the major weakness of the Patriots, at least the last two seasons, has been scoring points, getting in the end zone, moving the football downfield, getting in the red zone, and and completing drives. And there are so many questions. Are they going to modernize the offense and become more of a Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay style scheme? Or are they going to bring back Bill O'Brien or Josh McDaniels to continue running the kind of, uh, what are they called, Earhart Perkins, Tom Brady style scheme? Like, if you're going to go with the former there, that's going to be a real change. A change that I would really like to see, but you're going to have to make up those decisions very soon. And look, maybe I'm being too tough on Mayo here. You know, there were some, a lot of really good things coming out of this introductory press conference, and you, you can't expect you're going to get all those answers. We're going to get those answers in the coming weeks for sure. Um, and I really did like what Mayo had to say about developing, th- developing people. That was kind of the constant theme throughout. Um, that he wants to develop people, you know, not just the players, but the coaches. And he wants to do that by changing the culture, being more collaborative, and having everyone with a strong input. And that's very important, especially on the offensive side of the ball, where there hasn't been a lot of player development over the last few years. I'd argue the last decade, really. I mean, even when they were still winning Super Bowls, a lot of those offensive weapons that were there were either drafted in the early 2010s or... Um, they were brought in as as free agents, and there wasn't a lot of player development at the skill positions. And Mayo has certainly helped develop defensive players over the last few years, and hopefully that transcends to the rest of the team. So I think he's a great fit there. Um, and if you want to develop players, you know, I, I, I know I'm pushing for more of a modernized offense, but there is a real argument to bringing Josh McDaniels back, right? Because... Mac Jones looked pretty good his rookie year. I'm not saying you put Mac Jones back out there with Josh McDaniels. He's clearly been broken by the last couple of seasons. I think you got to move on, maybe make him the backup and, and see what he could do if the starting quarterback of the future goes down. But, you know, McDaniels does a heck of a job developing offensive players when he's sticking just to that offensive coordinator role. And certainly there's an argument to bringing him back there. Um, look, I do think Gerard Mayo is going to do a good job. Um, he certainly earned the head coaching job on merit, like definitely. The, the defensive results speak for it, speaks for itself. He obviously was an incredible player, was voted team captain by his teammates his second year in the league, had two Pro Bowl appearances, went into business at Optum uh, for a few years, worked in media, and then went into the coaching staff and worked his way up to the role he is now. Robert Kraft... Bill Belichick really groomed him for this role. 
he's exceeded expectations in everything he's done. And I think he's probably, hopefully, going to exceed expectations as a head coach. But, you know, Mayo talked a lot in the press conference about not wanting to set expectations too early, which is fine from his viewpoint, but he should know that the fans in New England, and certainly Robert Kraft, have very high expectations. The team will probably be a lot better next season. I I, I really think they will be better, but even if they win seven games, which is three more than this past season, that's not going to cut it for most. We want to be a playoff team. And not only do we want to be a playoff team, we want to be atop the AFC East division. We want home playoff games, and we want to be contending to make it into the Super Bowl year in and year out. And it's it's going to take a lot for the Patriots to get back there. And I, I, I hope Mayo understands that, yeah, there may be a little bit of patience on the side of Robert Kraft and and understanding that there is going to be a learning curve there as head coach, and Mayo certainly admitted that, but people are expecting the Patriots to win football games because this last season, I know the offense was not strong from a player personnel standpoint, but they should have won more than four games. This should have been a 500-level team. Nearly every game except for, I think, three of the losses were within one possession. Even the last game against the Jets, they kind of blew up in the final minutes, but the Patriots had a chance to win that game. You know, the margin between being a good team and a bad team is so small in the NFL relative to the rest of the professional sports leagues that you need to be able to to make that leap, and you have to be able to do it pretty quickly. Now, the Patriots have the number three overall pick in the draft. Mayo said in an interview um, uh, yesterday that we're going to draft a skill position player that's very important. So it sounds like they're going to draft a quarterback there. But you know whether you, you, you bring in a QB through the draft or maybe you got a shot at Kirk Cousins in free agency, I'm not sure about any of the other quarterbacks um, really being able to, to put that offense over the hump. But you got to get there. And, and I don't think it is... I don't think it's it's like they need to bring they need to flip the offense on its head. You know they're already talking about bringing Kendrick Bourne back. You can probably bring Hunter Henry back with a franchise tag. You got Demario Douglas, your slot receiver of the future. Um, you have pieces on that O line as much as they struggled. You're going to have to address the tackle positions, but three of those positions with Cole Strange, David Andrews, and I'd argue City so. Um, at least heading into year two with a little more experience, I think you're pretty locked up there. You're going to have to deal with the tackles, but this doesn't need to be a full rebuild on the offense. You just got to address the quarterback. You got to bring in a wide receiver one and address the tackle positions, and that's really it, and bring back the defense. And suddenly, if you are coached correctly, and if the culture works out the way Mayo wants it to, then you got a pretty damn good football team heading into 2024. So it's going to be interesting. We'll be here along the way of Pat's cast to cover it. Um, I have high expectations for Mayo. I, I hope he does a good job. I think he will do a good job. Um, but this, this introductory press conference left me with a lot of questions and concerns about overcorrecting the culture and the Patriot way because you got to have a guy who's ultimately the decision maker and not everything can be collaborative. That's not how great organizations are run. There has to be a guy at the top that makes those decisions. Maybe that's Mayo's intention. That question remains to be answered. We'll see what happens. Be sure to subscribe and like this video if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. We'll be back to cover the changes to the coaching staff at the offensive and defensive coordinator roles heading into the draft, what they should do there, and certainly covered free agency, which is just around the corner.